Hey y'all, thanks for joining another Two with Tim. This one will be Two with Tim Overtime because we're gonna talk about the importance of why we are opposed to the $15 minimum wage increase that eliminates tips. We have people in the restaurant business who've made a profession out of working in the restaurant business. We're gonna talk with one of those folks today because I think it's better to hear from an expert about tips and why the increase in the minimum wage may actually be a decrease in Cassie's income. Let's hear from Cassie. Let's go. Hello, Cassie. Sarah, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Doing well. Thank you for uh, having well, us. Are you making something that I might really enjoy over there? I am. Ah. I am. The infamous Shirley Temple. Oh, my Shirley Temple. Yeah. My favorite drink at the bar is a Shirley That's Temple. That's right. And so I'm looking forward to having Want to keep it light, you know, during the day here, you we know? we got to keep it light. That's yeah. exactly right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Cassie. No problem, no problem. Well, how, how long have you been behind the bar, Cassie? So I've officially been behind the bar for 14 and a half years. 14 and a half mm -hmm. years. It's so this is not a job. This is a career for you. Oh, yeah, this is life. That's awesome. That's this is awesome. my well-being. Well, as you think about reducing your income to $15 an hour and eliminating the tips, what would that mean to you from hours to shifts how would that impact the quality of your life? You know, honestly, it's it hurts. Um, the amount of shifts that I would probably have would probably cut in half. Wow. So normally I work about four to five shifts a week, but that would probably cut to two. And how many hours do you work on an average shift? On an average shift, 10 hours plus. Uh, so that can go to 14 hours, 15 hours. We have an in time, but we do not have an out time. My goodness. So because most of your income comes from tips, I would mm -hmm. imagine. Yes. On a good night, after 14 hours, what could you be looking at? On a good night? Yes. You're looking at 400 plus. $400 a night. Or, or if you go to the $15 minimum wage, that would be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 150 for a 10 hour shift. 150, 150 yeah. versus 400. It's a significant difference. Significant difference. It seems like some people don't really appreciate the value of the tipped part of your income. Right. And having, before I went full time in politics, I worked on a 100% commission for, for decades. And so I personally appreciate that when you work really hard on tips or commission, you can make a lot of money. Absolutely. And if you are pretty good at the job, you still make more than the $15 an hour right. as someone in the business. Is, right. that, is that an accurate understanding? I would say yes. yes. I would think in the hospitality industry, this is a skill set. And you, what you bring to the table is what you get out of it. Yes. And I think this is a great foundation just for everyday life. You know, depending on what you want to go into, how you want to move, is basically how you deal with customer service on yes. a regular basis. And, and yeah. And if we're used to good uh, customer service, it's important to tip or in, uh, compensate you based on the quality of the experience right, that I one agree. has. Yes, sir, I agree. And that's the American way. I, I've been to some foreign countries, some European countries where they don't tip at all. And right. I feel like they don't tip at all. Right. Well, here, I feel like we get a, a better experience because you, as a professional, you're providing high quality experience that you don't get in other countries and in other places. Right. I completely agree. You know, well, and there are instances where, you know, we do get individuals from under other countries that do not tip. Yes. But that's just what they're used to. Right. And, yeah. and then we get the ones that will ask, hey, are you guys accepting tips? You know, and then, you know, that brings on the conversation, you know, exactly. and then you understand, you know, how to move forward with that. With Absolutely. That, so. Well. I think we'll, we'll spend some time talking to Chef John, who owns the place, and what the increase in the minimum wage means to the overall oh, yeah. cost of business and why that leads to fewer shifts and maybe more jobs and longer hours to right. make the same amount of money. Yeah. Is that an accurate understanding that you have? Yeah. Okay. In order to make what we, what we normally make in about three to four days, we're yes. going to have to put in more time. So that's 60 hour plus weeks, which means more time away from family and more time away from what we just normally do to relax. Yes. We yes. won't be relaxing. We're going to be working all the time. That's crazy. Now, one last point before we move to Chef John. And thank you for my Shirley Temple, no by problem. the way. It's really good. No problem. This could hold... 15 to 20 people, but in the middle of the pandemic, 
don't you have a, a a limit on how many folks can sit here now? Well, in the pandemic, we can't have anyone sit at the bar. Okay. So that's, that's, that's powerful. That we no one can sit here. Yes. So that takes away 15 stools and roughly 10 stools behind you. So that's a 10 wow. stool, uh, stool rail right here. Wow. 25 seats all together. That means that we have to split tables with servers, which cuts a shift from a server because the bartender has to take tables down. And so roughly we're looking at maybe five tables a person. So your, 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 your capacity here, you're only using about 25% of your capacity if you're lucky. For the inside. Now the outside is completely different. Yep. But inside, yes. So that means that Chef John and the restaurant is uh, probably struggling right now in a way that it wasn't pre-pandemic. Yes, sir. And Absolutely. that's going to be tougher on, on you. That means that you're working longer hours Trying during the pandemic. And so if we put on top of the longer hours and the pandemic that cuts the number of people you can have in here, now we're going to uh, increase the wages on one side, but eliminate the major part of your income on the other side. Right. That means long hours of work long for hours less money than you were making before right so <laughs> where there's normally two different shifts where you have an a.m shift or p.m i think that that's just going to be one full shift wow and we're only open seven what six to seven days a week yeah and so the, we're going to have to cut jobs my goodness someone's going to get left out yeah, and I, that's I, not the purpose of this whole thing you know my goodness well thank you cassie that's been thank awesome. you so much appreciate it very appreciate much you. thank you God bless. see you soon